ladies and gentlemen, this is Di. She's our lead pastor, and she's going to do our mini message today. Thank you. Yeah, great to be back here again. It wasn't so long ago. I seem to be standing here. So we're really, really grateful that you are here, though. So today, we're just going to move through from... Um, the conversation we started last week about identity. And I was so super excited and encouraged to see that identity is something that's resonating with us right now. It's something that's very important to us, not just to the pastor. And that's a good sign. <laughs> and so we're going to have a few weeks of just hearing from that. You're going to hear from Phil and Kath as well during February. They're going to come and be speaking and sharing on Sundays, which will be great. But for today, if you weren't around last week, a quick recap. We looked at um, Jesus receiving God's view of him in his baptism, and you'll see that on the screen hopefully in a moment, where we all know in Mark 1, we read that Jesus heard a voice that came from heaven declaring, you are my beloved son, and with you I am well pleased. Let's just read that together after I say one, two, three. Really loud voice, okay? Let's, let's read that and hear those words out loud out of your own mouth. One, two, three. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Let's say it one more time, a bit louder. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. That was a thundering voice that came as Jesus was baptized. And so we are today going to have a think and reflect on, have you had a defining moment with your identity where you've seen God come and tell him his view, tell you his view about who you are? And last week, we had a look at some of the phrases that we were using. If you want to flick back to that, Joe, we were saying, we're not listening to what others say you are. We're not listening to who you think you are. We're listening for God's view of who you are. And the one before that, you are who he says you are. This is what we were looking at last week. And the final one is, I am who he says we are. I am. So today... I want you to reflect on that. Have you had a defining moment? Maybe it's been a scripture that's just broken into your world and it's become really real and identified you as God saying that to me. That's my scripture for life. Maybe you've had dreams where God's just broken into your night sleeping resting time and spoken to you. Maybe you've had prophetic encouragement like what we just did where someone's spoken something over you and it opened up an identity of how God views you. So today, we're going to do that just for the next few moments. We're going to sp spend about 10 minutes in small groups. Better to be small because otherwise you won't get to hear. If you're a bit shy, you can listen. But most of you have a story that we want to hear. And as you share your defining moment, you'll also discover that you're opening up the door for someone else to understand how God views them with that. So before I was talking about kindness and a man that experienced kindness and that became then a part of his world in a very tough world and God's view of him came through kindness. Maybe you've had something like that happen to you as well. And if you finish that defining moment in your group, you can go on to looking at some fruit, but I don't think we'll have time for that before we get to feast up the back. So just concentrate on your defining moment today. All right, so groups of three, four, Let's do that now. Maybe if you've come with someone, you might want to join a different group because you might know their story already. Or you might actually want to stay there. Is that what's going on over there? <laughs> Let's get into groups. You can move your chairs around. And I'll be back shortly to finish us up with this focus time. What's a defining moment for you?